In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Amen. Good morning to everybody watching us at home. A special hello this morning to my mum. Today is her birthday, and I'm celebrating this Mass for her. Um, I'm wearing my ordination vestment because it was 23 years ago this year when I was ordained priest that Mum brought forward my uh, ordination vestment at my ordination, so I'm wearing this for you, Mum. Do you also remember in your prayers today, a friend of mine, Vicky, uh, she's due to have her first baby today. Um, she's going in for an elective section because she's type 1 diabetic, and so there's obviously possible further complications. So you can remember, please, Vicky, uh, baby's father, Rivo, also the um, baby's grandparents, Josie and Ian, who are very good friends of mine, and also the baby's new auntie, Georgina. So be thinking of you all today and hoping all is okay. Today we keep the feast of the presentation of the Lord. This feast was originally a celebration of the Jerusalem church, and it rec recalls the recognition by Simeon and Anna, the account of which we hear in today's gospel. On today's feast, we acclaim Jesus as the light of the nations. As we begin our celebration together, we pause to call to mind the terms when we would prefer not to have his healing, searching light in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten son was presented on this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god for ever and ever amen A reading from the prophet Malachi. The Lord God says this, Look, I am going to send my messenger to prepare a way before me, and the Lord you are seeking will suddenly enter his temple, and the angel of the covenant whom you are longing for, yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Who will be able to resist the day of his coming? Who will remain standing when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire and the fuller's alkali. He will take his seat as refiner and purifier. He will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And then they will make the offering to the Lord as it should be made. The offering of Judah and Jerusalem will then be welcomed by the Lord, as in former days, 
as in the years of old. The word of the Lord. Responses. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. O gates, lift up your heads. Grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter, the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, the mighty, the valiant. The Lord, the valiant in war. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. O gates, lift high your heads. Grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter, the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is he, the King of glory? He, the Lord of armies, he is the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since all the children share the same blood and flesh, Jesus too shared equally in it, so that by his death he could take away all the power of the devil, who had power over death, and set free all those who had been held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. For it was not the angels that he took to himself. He took to himself descent from Abraham. It was essential that he should in this way become completely like his brothers, so that he could be a compassionate and trustworthy high priest of God's religion, able to atone for human sins. That is, because he himself has been through temptation, he is able to help others who are tempted. The word of the Lord. The Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. The light to enlighten the Gentiles and give glory to Israel, your people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the law required, he took him into his arms and blessed God, and he said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all the nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, You see this child, he is destined for the fall and for the rising of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, She was well on in years. Her days of girlhood over, she had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by just at that moment and began to praise God, and she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law of the Lord required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity, and he was filled with wisdom, and God's favour was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Today's feast of the presentation of the Lord or Candlemas because of the practice of blessing candles commemorating Christ the Light occurs 40 days after Christmas. As I said a couple of weeks ago, according to the Missal of 1962, today is the end of Christmas tide. Today's feast was known as the Purification of Mary, which, because she was sinless, was an opportunity for her to rededicate herself to the service of God's plan. The current title of today's feast is because this celebration marks the day when the Lord was offered by his mother and foster father, Joseph, to God the Father who sent him. Traditionally, the presenting of Jesus and the Jewish rites that accompanied it wouldn't have required the Holy Family to go to the temple in Jerusalem. But that they chose to do so sets the scene for the encounter at the heart of today's Gospel. Mary, Joseph, Simeon and Anna were all united in their desire to do the Lord's will. During Christmas tide, we heard how Mary said yes to the angel at her Annunciation, and Joseph responded to what the Lord said to him through his dreams, prompting him to take Mary and the baby to Egypt. Today we also hear how Simeon and Anna were both open to what the Lord asked of them. Some of the time we might wish that the Lord would speak to us in the way he spoke to Mary, Joseph, Simeon and Anna. But do we give him the space to speak and are we open to what he might say? Simeon's message to Mary that a sword would pierce her soul wasn't one she would have welcomed. But God knew that Mary's yes at her renunciation was not a fair-weather commitment. He knew that when she said yes, she was ready to embrace whatever the Lord had in mind for her, knowing that even if it caused her great pain, it would still be for the best. A wise friend of mine told me a profound saying when I was going through a difficult period. It states that the Lord gives you some of what you want and all of what you need. This should give us confidence that the Lord is looking after us. Because some of the time, if we're honest, we're more interested in having what we want because we lack the perspective that the Lord has. What we want often turns out not to be good for us. Today we mark the selfless offering from Mary and Joseph of what God had given them. Today's feast urges us to imitate their example and place ourselves into the Lord's hands, knowing that he loves us as he loves his own son. We turn to God our Father now in our prayers of intercession. Our God has redeemed us through the death and resurrection of the only begotten Son. Let us pray that we might be worthy one day to be with God forever that the Church might proclaim the presence of Christ by holy actions and faithful service of all humanity. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. that leaders of nations might be a light shining in the darkness and govern justly with care for all. Lord, in your mercy, that those who seem to be lost in the darkness of sin might see the light and the glory of Christ and repent. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. that each of us may prepare ourselves to recognise Christ the light in our midst through our enduring fidelity to God's ways. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for Mum on her birthday. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For Vicky, due to have her baby today. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In this moment of silence, we remember those needs kept in the quiet of our hearts. Mighty God, your only begotten Son, redeemed all of humanity. Hear these our prayers, that we might come to live in everlasting life with you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. 
Bless to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple, and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we too go forth, rejoicing to encounter your salvation, and with the angels and saints praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us, and as you fulfil Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be Amen. to God. Thank you for joining me for Mass this morning, those of you here in church and those of you at home.